What works? Language, literacy and numeracy in training and assessment. Vocational trainers think that they may not have to teach speaking and listening, but every job will have a, a particular kind of speaking and listening, um, some more than others. So, for instance, if you're working in community services and health and you need to um, interview a client, for example, that's a very particular kind of speaking and listening. Quite often we'll get up a student say, oh, the thingy won't work. And that's my answer is, what thingy are you talking about? Getting them to use correct terminology in its engineering context, I want them to come and ask me a specific question. Ask me a question, don't tell me that it's just the thingy. Being able to say to somebody on the end of a telephone, I need a particular um, manual for a particular uh, piece of machinery. Not just send me that book, please, for this job, for the thingy. Every day I make just about all every one of my students get up on the board and explain something, or I'll ask them a question where they have to explain stuff to me, and I always tell them that if you don't know something, then a question's good. If you know the answer, then you shouldn't be asking the question in the first place. So I've got students that always have the answers and they're, they're more than happy to participate and engage. I'll engage the students that won't engage. If they can't listen uh, and they can't verbalise, we could have some safety issues. Whilst we're a very safe workshop here, some of the job sites that uh, these guys are working in aren't the safest place, so they really need to listen to instructions given to them and they need to be able to speak up and identify and say something when there are some safety issues. They need to be able to speak up if they're given a task and say, I don't understand this task, I'm not sure what you need me to do. The best way to support learners in, uh, in perfecting those skills is role play. Show them how to do it, break it down into parts, show them the different parts of an interview with a, a client and, uh, and let them practice it, practice, practice. Well, how they learn from that is, is we, we actually bring them in and, and put them in as, a, as an example of an interview. So we'll interview them as a, in, a, in a mock interview process so they get comfortable with that process. Some of them, have, as I said, you know, range from 19 to 46. Some of them will have had lots of interviews. Some of them will have had none since leaving school. And so, therefore, not everybody's on the same page. So it's good to see, and it's also good to get them to understand that what might work for one person doesn't quite work for somebody else as well. In terms of what we're doing now, Kevin and I would um, probably model that, how you ask questions and how you ask open questions, how you ask closed questions. So you talk about the art of questioning and you talk it, about it in connection with the art of active listening. The two go together. We're doing workplace training and assessing predominantly, so we don't always have the ability to observe them as they're working, so we set up simulations for them and get them to practice their communication skills um, in mock situations. This is skills that people need to be successful in life. If you don't have these basic skills, it's very difficult then to communicate well in an interview and to progress further in careers, in life in general.